will our sun explode someday in the far future? And um, I've titled it The Many Deaths of Stars. And the end goal of this lesson is, if I showed you a star in the sky, for example, our sun, which you can see in the day, um, hopefully this lesson will help you guess how that star is going to die. In particular, is it going to die in a violent explosion, like in the picture on the left? Uh, or is it going to just go in a whimper, shrink away and go cold um, and just disappear like that? Uh, and to answer this question along the way, uh, we are going to learn first how stars actually stay alive. Okay, what nourishes them? So before we, just before we get into that, um, we all know that um, the sun is bright and hot. That's where we get most of our natural light and heat from. Um, so have we ever paused to think about this question? Why exactly is the sun hot? And this question is um, particularly for uh, Dawood and uh, Sarah because Mac and uh, Sharmista do this for a living. Could you answer why the, do you, do you know or remember why the sun is hot? Put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> um, chem chemical reaction? You're almost there, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that would be because, because of uh, greenhouse gas emission and climate change. That's why the earth is hot. Uh, but why is the sun itself hot is the question. Uh, the ultrasound ray is, uh, the ozone layer is getting thinner. Energy. You're right. Let, let me just spoil this. It's hot Excellent. because it's burning some fuel inside. Okay. And when, and the burning happens through what is known as nuclear fusion, doesn't matter what the details are. Uh, there are these, all these atomic nuclei inside the sun. They get together, fuse, and that process, it's, it's, so Sarah said chemical reaction, it's just a nuclear reaction. It's, the, the only difference is the nuclear reaction. And that process releases energy. And that energy comes out as light and heat. Okay? Now, how does this keep the star alive? So here's a cartoon of what's actually going on in the star. Um, so there's all this burning going on. And when burning happens, the heat pushes the material of the star outward. Okay, and this is exactly what keeps the star from collapsing under its own weight because a star is a, a giant object in the sky. So it has so much weight that it can collapse under its own weight. And these two outward forces of heating and inward force of gravity keep uh, balance each other out. Okay, but there's a problem because someday the fuel is gonna run out, right? It's, it's not infinite fuel. There's only so much hydrogen in the sun. And when that day comes, the gravity, there's nothing to overpower the gravity and the star is going to collapse, right? I'm going to, I'm going to use the word sun and star interchangeably because the sun is a star, okay? Now let's think a little more about collapse. Um, two things could happen uh, when a star collapses, depending entirely on how heavy the star is, okay? If you are thinking of a small star, by which I mean a star smaller than eight solar masses, a solar mass is the mass of the sun, as you could have guessed, then eventually this star is gonna end up as what is known as a white dwarf, which is just a quiet, cold star that basically does nothing. It's just sitting around, not burning anything really. Okay, basically a giant snowball in the sky. But if the star happens to be greater than eight solar masses, it's so heavy that it cannot help exploding violently. And this is what we call a supernova explosion. All right. So, small star, do we have an example in the visible sky? Can you guess what star in the sky you know of which has a mass less than eight solar masses? The sun. The sun, absolutely, exactly. <laughs> because the sun by definition has one solar mass. And this is what's gonna happen to the sun in five billion years, okay? Enough time to put in your nomination. Um, so, this, the other type of collapse is for a really heavy star. Um, and do we have an example in the sky? There is one famous example, which you could go look out for tonight. We all know the Orion constellation. I'm, I'm sure you all know the Orion constellation. It's easy to locate in the southern sky tonight. And the left shoulder, leftmost shoulder of Orion is what is known as Betelgeuse, um, about which there's a famous movie by Michael Keaton. 
that has a mass of 20 solar masses and it is reputed to go off anytime starting today to the next million years. Okay, and when that happens, if the if beta juice were to go off tonight, that would be the brightest object in the night sky. Okay, as bright as the full moon, and this is what it's going to look like. Thank you very much, Nirmal. Thank you.